Hi guys, good morning. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Justine Leslie. I'm an intuitive reader. I speak a lot about spiritual awakenings, empaths, and um, toxic relationship healing. And I provide tools for all of that. So um, this video is actually the weekly reading uh, for the week of January 19th. Uh, 2020 so we're on our third week so I have them all laid out here for you um, and basically each one means a certain thing so I will go ahead and start the reading and again guys always comment and let me know if this resonates with you if this makes sense if you have any questions or just to say hi um, I'm totally open to it okay so first things first um, our first card here um, we have the strengths of the week. So let's take a look at what we're using here. Oh, and by the way, guys, I'm using my Angels and Ancestors deck by Kyle Gray. Um, so it's a different deck from last week and the week before. Okay, so basically the strengths of this week. So we got the Spirit Fox. We have the Trust Your Talents in Changing Times. So basically, I feel a lot of change happening for you guys this week um, as far as the energy goes. Um, but it's important that we remember that it's actually a strength of ours is that we can think on our feet. And what's coming through is more like resourceful, um, resort, resourceful, resilient, those kinds of words. Those are really, really big strengths for you guys this week. So I'm not surprised that something may happen this week where you have to kind of think on your feet. But this is, again, your strength, guys. We are all, even if you're empathic, and I've talked about this before, sometimes it takes us a while to make a decision or for us to act quickly or something along those lines. But really what this is saying is, um, trust your your talents in changing times. It, it's not just meaning talents. It's meaning instincts, um, like this, like the fox, right? Very swift. Um, but instincts meaning um, intuitively. So something tells me this week. Um, you know, there might be something happening that may shake things up um, in your life. Um, it's feeling a little bit more towards work. Um, so it's either, uh, you know, it, the message here is like go go with the punches and 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 act on your feet and. Um, use your instincts and your intuition. Um, you are very resourceful, you're very resilient, and you can get through this. Um, dwelling on it is not the best thing to do this week, but again, this is coming up in the strength spot, so I think you guys already know that, and you're ready to take action, so. Okay, so that was strengths. Let's take a look at what weakness is. Okay, so here we go. This is Traveler, move in a new direction. So I love this card because, um, it just, it, I'm a Gemini, so I'm really all about change. Um, so I love when that comes up because really it's just saying go into a new direction. So as it comes up in the weakness spot, um, something that we may need to work on this week is maybe, you know, and I can take that, uh, um, I could take this guidance myself as well is that maybe we do need to go in a different direction and this might be tough um, on a lot of people if they have been dedicating them, themselves to one career path for example or one particular job that they've been loyal to or a direction in their business they thought that was really really going to work for them um, but this is really pointing to it's really time to start just thinking about it, okay? This is not exactly like the card before where it's like, okay, this is definitely an action card. This is more about, let's think about it. This is more about being in your being, right? And really figuring out what is that new direction? What is the universe trying to tell me this week? Um, again, um, the weakness is coming up in the form of stubbornness um, where we don't want to kind of look at it. And that's why I'm saying it's not necessarily something that we have to do, but it's something that we have to be. So we need to look at that stubbornness. Um, so yeah, I definitely see a change of direction for a lot of people for the collective consciousness. So keep that in mind. But again, stubbornness um, is just um, not allowing, that's basically what is stubborn, right? Uh, that's resistance to letting the flow come through. Um, so, uh, we don't want to resist, right? We want to let things flow um, easily um, and nicely for us, uh, nicely and uh, synchronistically. Uh, <laughs> it's a hard word to say sometimes. Um, but we're also not letting, um, when we're closed off and, and stubborn, we're not allowing other opportunities to come through. So that is definitely something to look at this week. Um, romance. All right, what's going on with the collective consciousness here? Okay. 
Um, so basically the stag came up, okay, and uh, it says trust and thrive. And usually stag is very much so heavy on the masculine side of things. And it's basically saying that we need to have more trust in the masculine. Now, this can mean actually a couple of things for this week, upcoming week. Number one, it's important for us to head into our masculine. Now, it might seem a little oxymoron-ish that I just told you guys the being, right? Because when we're in our being energy, we're more in feminine energy, right? And that's really just... Um, and I don't want to say stagnant, but it's in your being, right? I can't really explain it any other way. Um, but this stag here um, is saying that we need to lean a little bit more into our masculine, right? Um, and basically, that's more about... Um, um, taking action. So now this is in the romance spot. So this means that sometimes and possibly, you know, this week it feels like the energy is super strong is that um, if you're not used to being in your masculine, it's time to start being in your masculine, right? And especially, um, I'm very heavy on my feminine. I'm very um, intuitive. I'm very feelings-based, right? I'm, I have a lot of feminine qualities, but this is telling you for romance this week to start moving a little bit more into your masculine and it will benefit you. Now, what could that mean romance-wise? This could mean that, um, and basically we need to trust it, right? That trust is coming through. Um, what does this mean? This could definitely mean that, um, you know, we need to be a little bit more headstrong or um, take the lead on certain things. Um, whether you are in a relationship already, maybe you're the one that has to carry uh, uh the team for this week so that's moving more into the masculine um what else um if you're pursuing someone or somebody's pursuing you maybe this week um you need to try something different and, and try to pursue them reach out to them first something along those lines so it can work for both in a partnership and being single or just dating uh, but it just feels like it's time to really move into the masculine for this week and it'll benefit um benefit you guys as the collective consciousness um and it's really all about trust so trust that that's going to happen and try something different okay that was a fun one <laughs> okay so this is personal so what's going on with you personally so i love 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 this one because obviously guys i'm super into the angels guardian angels you are not alone so usually when this card comes up um, this just means, um, obviously your angels are always with us guys, but this week they will be making their presence very known. Um, the reason why I usually get this card is, is because we haven't been believing, we haven't been trusting. And I see a theme here about trust. Um, we haven't been trusting that we have guides that really are there to love, support us, um, love and support us, uh, throughout our lives and, and throughout the week, right? Um, you know. Uh, but this week in particular, they will definitely make themselves more present um, in either the form of um, feathers, angel numbers, as they do a series about that. Um, and then sometimes they get coins. And here's the other thing, guys, that I want to say is that um, if you feel like it's a sign, it's a sign. Um, the only way that it makes sign different from anything else is that it feels like a sign. So it's actually the vibration of it that you need to pay attention to. Um this is not a place for logic. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised um, if a lot of you tried to um, use your logical brain to figure it out. Um, if you're really racking your brain about whether it's a sign or not, I encourage you to go um, into the heart space and really feel into it. Because again, it's a sign if it feels like it's a sign, okay? And everybody gets signs differently and everybody has their own relationships with their guides and everybody has their own um, type of communication. So for me, it comes up with feathers. I started seeing them yesterday, so that makes a lot of sense. Um, I haven't seen them in a while. Um, and also um, uh, numbers come to me a lot, a lot. So, And it's always unique to the individual person, but I would look out for all of that stuff this week. Okay. Work-wise, what's going on work-wise? I touched on it a little bit earlier, but let's see what else we got going on here. Okay, yeah, so everything so far is telling me that um, it's time to kind of redefine what you're doing for work. Um, and this might uh, be coming up because I definitely feel like as a whole for the whole year and going forward really is that, um, you know, I did um, a monthly reading um, in the beginning of the month, please check out that video if you can. But for the yearly, 
Um, it just feels like we're moving more into like uh, more independence and freedom and work and people are demanding it now. I know a lot of people have jumped on the remote working train. I know co-working spaces are popping up everywhere. Um, everybody really kind of starting their own business. So I, and we're moving more towards what makes us feel more passionate and realizing that the old paradigm of how we used to, paradigm of how we used to work, it's not working anymore, right? Who goes to work? Um, I'm in New York City, so I know a lot of finance people that do this, but it, some people go to work at 7 a.m. and then leave at 10 p.m. I've seen it. Um, we have a culture here in New York City where it's work, 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 work all the time. Um, but what are we really doing for ourselves as far as what our soul needs? Um, as far as what our, our passions are, our purpose is. So that is something I noticed for the year that's happening. So I'm actually not really surprised by this spread. I'm actually surprised it doesn't come up sooner in the last couple of readings. Anyway, this week is saying really take the time to reflect. For some reason, I'm getting journaling. Um, I need you guys to write it out. Like I'm getting that specific message. Write out what exactly you like about your job and what you don't like about your job. Um... There are ways to improve how you think about it and feel about it, right? Guys, everything is a decision, right? Including how we feel about something and how we think about something, right? Um, so it's a choice. So we need to actually write, get all of this stuff down, get it all out, and then really figure out where you can actually make changes in how you show up work-wise. So can you change... Um, a negative pattern at work by just the way that you're thinking or you know can you look at it a different way that kind of thing now it's totally okay if you want to actually leave the job or you want to do another career or you want to move to something that's that's you know if you listen everything out and there's nothing that you can really do but accept and maybe do some small changes but you really know intuitively that this is not for you that's totally fine. This whole week seems to be about reflecting. Um, you know, it's the mirror guardian, right? It says take time to reflect. Reflecting back to what actually fulfills your soul. What actually fulfills you. So this is definitely, um, you know, I got it with work earlier in the reading. It's coming out again in the work spot. So definitely take a look. Um, do not hesitate. It's going to... Um, I guess I want to say keep bothering you <laughs> for the remainder of the year um, if you or the remainder of your life really if you don't start like this is like a good time to start reflecting on what actually brings you joy every single day okay for work. Um, okay so this one is for clarity so this one is really around like um, what we need clarity the most on this week so hopefully I can help you guys out. Okay interesting. Okay, so we have this she, she wolf, unleash the wild within. So actually, this makes a lot of sense. So basically, um, <laughs> when it comes to romance, it, like I said, the masculine is super dominant right now and trusting, moving into masculine energy, trusting the masculine, that kind of thing. Now, what this is coming up about in the clarity section is the she wolf unleash the wild within. So this is actually pointing more towards the uh, feminine energy um, and divine feminine. So um, it almost feels like we're confused. Like there's almost this thing this week about like um, really like a confusion around the gender roles period um and and maybe I shouldn't say gender roles guys because I really don't believe the souls have gender right and when I actually talk masculine and feminine I'm actually talking energy we all have both okay it's the yin to the yang um we all possess both feminine and masculine energies within ourselves um right and if you look at dating right if you break that down um somebody that's really feminine will definitely attract a, someone that's really masculine right uh, that's just kind of the nature of things right so here it's saying that there needs to be like there's some confusion around it so this might be about how do you show up um, how do you show up in your feminine? Um, and what does that mean to you? What what does being a woman mean to you? Um, and how could you actually 
um, practice being in that type of energy. Um, again, strong masculine energy coming up in the romance department, right? And again, it meant two things. It means even as a female, move more into your masculine energy um, for a particular uh, for the for romance. But this is this is for general, right? This is for general. So basically, what I'm saying is that it's more about like education, um, and it's more about like how do I improve myself? It's not necessarily within a relationship. Again, like I said, I feel we need to move a little bit more masculinely um, in, our, in, in the romance department, but this is in general, like as, as an individual. Now, when we're looking at a male, right, and we're saying move more into your feminine energy, I've been saying this for thousands of years. <laughs> Right? Um, we've all been saying this for thousands of years. I mean, people that are conscious, of course, is that the way that we teach men how to be does not align with the divine, uh, uh, the divine feminine, and it does not teach them that it's okay to be feminine in some types of ways. Um, now, I'm not saying that, um, you know, you might think I'm messing with all of these gender roles, but really what's happening here is that our men need to, it looks like our men need to be moving a little bit more into their feminine, being more in touch with that and in touch with their feelings, right? And then we have them, we have females that maybe need to get a little bit more headstrong and, and, uh, take charge of, of what they want in their romantic lives and things like that. So, and, you know, it, it just feels like um, we are trying to get back to that balance because it's not balanced right now. There are a lot of people I know, and I'm included, um, especially when I was going through my spiritual awakening, right? All feelings, um, I had to take care of myself, all healing, all intuitive, all all of that. Um, you know, I'm just starting to get in touch with my logical self and my analytical self and my headstrong self. And um, I'm trying to do a balance here as well without losing my, my dominance, which is... Um, uh, where I feel most comfortable, where I feel most myself, um, is the divine feminine, right? And it's actually what I need to do what I do, right? Um, but I also need it, the masculine, right, to put out videos, do the tech, all of that stuff. So it is creating a balance for me. Um, again, masculine is heavy in the romantic department and feminine is, um, uh, the divine feminine is just, um, I don't, the word curiosity just keeps coming out, almost curiosity. So I would say if you're heavy in the masculine um, in general, not in a romantic partnership or when it comes to romance, um, I would definitely take a look um, at um, where you are a little bit, uh, um, I want to say lacking um, when it comes to feminine energy. And the same thing when it comes to those that are mostly in their feminine energy, pick up a book about, um, you know, I just bought a bunch of books about the divine uh, feminine and things like that. I think people are becoming more curious in general. And I think that's why the word curious is coming out. Uh, and we need more clarity on this. So hopefully I gave you some type of clarity and didn't confuse you more, but more to come with that for sure, because the world is changing when it comes to stuff like that. Okay. So guidance this week. Okay. Again, <laughs> Very, very masculine energy coming out through this. So this is basically the high priest, um, and it says intend and create. So basically, sometimes when we hear create, we don't necessarily feel like it's masculine energy, but it's almost like um, the guidance we need this week is to... Um, our intentions need to be more firm, and they need to be more... Um, how do I say this? Intentional. <laughs> That's the only way I can come up with a word. Um, but I think you guys understand what I mean is that um, in, in the things that we do this week. So this is definitely um, something that we need to work on. And again, when I say things that we need to do this week, masculine is the doing, right? So this makes a lot of sense. So um, please um, spend the week, um, you know, writing out your intentions, which makes a lot of sense, right? About uh, what's happening work-wise with you guys. Um, so definitely... Um, take a look at your intentions um, about just, you know, the rest of the year, the rest of your life. But I mean, don't go that far out. Guys, if you're an empath, you tend to be a dreamer. I know that I am. And we always see the big picture. We don't necessarily see the everyday. This is more about the everyday, being present, right? Being present. Um, but yeah, this week you would definitely benefit from um, being more headstrong in your intentions. Okay, so this last one is what do we need healing on this week? What, when do we not need healing, guys, right? <laughs> it's crazy. Um, 
Ah, okay. I see this. I, see, I saw a lot like this last week. So we have the peacekeeper. So let go of the need to be right. Um, righteousness, man. It's coming up a lot. Um, it's coming up a lot in my own personal life. And it's coming up a lot with other people. Um, we feel that... Um, I actually want to do a whole video on righteousness. Because it can... You know, and this weekend is Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, day, weekends. Um, tomorrow is, is, is actually the day, um, the 20th. Um, and basically it is a good thing. It is a, you know, maybe I shouldn't use good, but I'll use positive. It's a positive thing, but we can take the energy behind it and the intentions, right? So that makes sense why intentions came up, um, behind it and, and go in a really, really, uh, negative direction so we want to keep ourselves high vibe and we actually do want to make a uh, we want to make a change um, especially if you consider yourself an indigo child or something like that um, you are here to change shit up uh, and you are a, a change maker and you are you do tend to be extremely righteous um, this is not going to serve you um, if you if you come at righteousness with ego and if you come at righteousness with fear um it's not going to serve you it doesn't serve anyone um and uh we know that martin luther king jr came as uh um came with love right um so but he was definitely righteous you can put righteous and love in the same cat um in this in the same vibration really um because that was the intention behind it so Basically, what's happening here is that we need to start learning how to release that. And by the way, guys, I really am pretty righteous. Um, and I know what year it is. I know, you know, here in America, we have a, um, this is a presidential election year. And I know things, tension is high and I get it. But we need to start now. We need to keep ourselves under control. And we need to make sure that we are, um, coming at things with love and not with fear. And that's so, so important. Um, so it's a good idea to start healing now, okay? Um, okay, so guys, what a wonderful week. <laughs> what an interesting, interesting week. Um, okay, so I hope this resonates with you guys. I will, um, I will post this today, obviously, on the 9th. And uh, guys, subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get weekly weekly readings like this. And um, I, uh, I'm looking forward. I'm going to do the romance reading next. So I'm looking forward to that. All right. Bye, guys.